the other example is talking about the NBA. All right, how many people are in the NBA right now? I don't know, less than a thousand. How how many of them look like a bald headed chubby checker, right? With legs that are. <laughs> um, you don't know. Like when you meet me in real life, everybody gets shocked because of how short I am and how wide. Yeah, because you put the angry camera and you're on FaceTime. <laughs> <laughs> this shit like fucking this. <laughs> chubby <But> checker. <laughs> most people have more more legs than upper body, right? It's normally in between. About, they're around 60% legs, 40% upper body. I'm the other way around. You're going harsh on yourself here, bro. I'm 60% right? upper body, 40% legs. That's why I can just touch my toes like that. Dude, that's right? wild. So easily. Everyone thinks they got great flex- flexibility. It's actually just math. Right? Look, see? Doc can't touch shit. I can't even straighten my legs. Doc can't touch shit. Three, two, one. And we're live, boys. So welcome to Hanging With Hardcore. This is episode number 14. And today's topic is finding and fixing your flaws through self-awareness. This is going to be a really good one because uh, it, it continues with last week, you know, stepping outside of your comfort zone. This is something that's going to be really hard to do, to look at yourself, find what's wrong with yourself, and then go out and fix them. Mm. But before we jump into it, let's check out this video. We've got a short one by Sad Guru. It's about 30 seconds long. This will really help set the tone for today's podcast. Our nose is located ni- right above our mouth. Suppose you don't brush your teeth for three days. Mm. Though this nose is right here, it won't tell you you have not brushed your teeth. Mm. The whole room will know you have not brushed your teeth, but you will not know. This is the human predicament. <laughs> it's very easy to see what's wrong with this guy, what's wrong with her, what's wrong with her takes a lot of observation to see what's wrong with this. Mm. That level of keenness of observation is missing in most people. They need to cultivate that. Man, this guy speaks so well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like he says like a lot of basic things, but just the way he says it is so mm. impactful. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. To be able to tell a story like the way he does. Yeah. Yeah, he's really, really, really good. I think there's a, like, there's a lot of truth in like some of the old school lessons like from Sadhguru where a lot of the world today, society is like trying to pivot away from that and tr- trying to create like these new ideals and all of that. Mm-hmm. So like that's why I love this podcast and a lot what we do at Hardcore is we're always going against the grain. Well, not always, but a lot of the time we actually have to go against the grain because otherwise you're going to turn out like everybody else. Mm-hmm. And you know what's happening right now in the world? Everyone's saying like, oh, we're all just humans, you know, don't worry, everybody makes mistakes, you know, it's always like, you know, trust your emotions and just follow who you are. But no one says like, hey, look at yourself in the mirror and ask, what's wrong with yourself? Mm. Like, what's wrong with you? Find out because we start off as such, you know, we always talk about the RPG game that we start off as these characters that we're so low, we're like level one. It's our goal to improve every single day and get better. And we can't just improve on like what we're strong at. We need to look at some things that are our flaws and fix them. Because with major flaws, we're never going to get ahead in life. Mm. Yeah. You want to tell us a little bit, Samar, about that um, story? You mentioned it the other day about the, the soccer coach and he was having yeah. a message to one of his players. Yeah. So um, so the, the, the thing is, uh, the, vi- the video was about um, this really, really... Uh, successful soccer coach manager um he's won literally everything you can in soccer aside from like um the world cup which is well, many many coaches don't really coach international but this guy has just been like coaching like club level his whole life and he's done really well and one of the things that's special about this coach he's actually called the special one right? <laughs> he calls himself that but one of the things special about him is that he's really good at communicating with humans and trying to understand their psychology um, and there were like some teams where he coached, where the players were so, uh, he almost had like a cult like following in every single club that he's been at because he's connecting with these players one-on-one. Um, and he's able to see their flaws when they can't see it themselves. And he believes in them, right? Mm. <clears throat> like where some players were literally willing to kill the other, other team mm. just for the coach. Yeah. Um, and the coach is Jose Mourinho. Uh, we'll link that in, in the show notes as well, the video to it. But basically in this video, what he's talking about was when he was coaching a club called Tottenham, um, there's this really good uh, 
promising football player who isn't as professional. That's his flaw. He's not professional. Um, you have players like Ronaldo that's like really professional. Um, they want to like make sure that they don't cut any corners so that they can be the best player that they possibly can. This person has a lot of potential, but it, he's wasting it. Mm-hmm. And um, Jose is talking about uh, he's going to regret in the future if he doesn't live up to the potential. And in the video, he says, you should not you should not perform better because I demand you to perform better. You should demand yourself to perform better mm-hmm. because you're capable of performing better. Like this guy, he went from like pretty much like non-league team all the way to the Premier League really fast. And he even made it to the England team. Um, so he has a lot of potential there. And on his day, he's a world-class player. Mm-hmm. But he's not consistent. He's talking about consistency. He's talking about you know showing up, fixing your little gaps. Mm-hmm. And he's saying, demand more from yourself and fix your flaws or else in the future you will regret it. Mm-hmm. So that's like the whole premise of the, the video. And I found that really impactful and so true. Like yeah. if you just have self-awareness, of your flaws um, you can fix it and I feel like Ronaldo is a type of player that probably went through something similar when he was at Manchester United when he when he got there at a young age and um, look at him now like when like his players like when he when he first got there they were saying he was he was terrible mm-hmm. like yeah he had like skills and he was quick and but he couldn't shoot right he couldn't pass properly he was doing too many skills it was just unnecessary and he realized that, like he literally, he would shoot in training. The ball would literally go everywhere. And then like after he realized, oh shit, my shot is terrible. He would spend hours after training just to uh, fix that flaw. And now he's like, one of, he's the best player of all time. Mm-hmm. So it's like same concept that he wants to apply to this mm-hmm. um, soccer player. And that was the essence of the video. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's super fun. Yeah, I think it's um what we're touching on is just like that that self awareness, like Sad Guru says as well. Like sometimes it's very difficult, even if you haven't brushed your teeth, your nose is not going to tell yourself that you you smell. Mm. It's so hard to look at yourself, and sometimes you need someone like this coach to look at you know look at you, analyze you, and then find your flaws and then say it to yourself. But like what we're trying to push as well is like try to be proactive, so you don't need someone you know. Obviously, you can't do everything because it is very difficult to see your own flaws. It is really hard to self-reflect, but try your best. Like, the world is constantly telling us, like, oh, don't criticize yourself. Don't do all of this stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. And it it is really tough. And that's why it relates to stepping outside the comfort zone. Because it is so hard to look yourself in the mirror and say, damn, man, like, this Dylan Weston guy, he needs help. He actually doesn't know the answer. And it really destroys the ego. I find mm. so many people, they just, they can't do that because their whole identity is wrapped up like, oh, I'm good. I know how everything works. But to look at yourself in the mirror and say like, I actually need to help this guy who's looking back at me. Mm. You know, I only need a coach for this guy. But then you, you do it out of love and, yeah. and not, you know, um, you, you don't spiral out of control and mm. become depressed that you're not capable because yeah. you are capable. I think... um. I think most people criticize themselves and I think that's true. A lot of people like, like you were saying, go into deep depression for it as well. Mm. And a lot of people, especially with social media, like comparing themselves to other people Mm. that look like they're, you know, living their life on social media. Mm. So I think most people do criticize themselves. That's no joke, Mm. but I don't think people criticize themselves out of love. Mm. In the right way. Yeah. In the right way. Because if they're comparing, like, uh, let's let's break that down. There is probably two types. The ones that do criticize themselves and the ones that have so much ego that they think they're already perfect. There's probably mm. like two big uh, major groups there. We are generalizing. But let's think about that, that first one that's comparing themselves to the person on social media. Obviously, it's a trap because we all know that's just a highlight reel. Yeah. And whatever we post on social media, it's not our real life. And it's just funny because like a lot of the people, you know, that show that life, they're in major debt and all this stuff and they're going to regret showing off and going for social status in 10 or 20 years from today, Mm. you know, but let's just think about that. If you're, if you're criticizing your or comparing yourself against these people and you want that, then you just like, some people just feel bad because they, you know, oh, I don't have that. 
But the next step is don't stop in that depressive state. Mm. It's like, okay, now what can I do about that situation and fix myself to get that? Yeah. That's where they stop. They don't go the next step is put in the work. Yeah. You know, like if I'm looking at a really wealthy pers- person, yeah. you know, I'm just like thinking, all right, so what does this guy know that I don't know? I've got to find the flaws in my game yeah. and fix them. Mm. Yeah. I think it's the same answer for the other demographic as well people who do criticize themselves mm. is if they when they do criticize themselves they actually don't go far enough mm. so they criticize themselves maybe out of love uh, maybe not out of love i should say as g is saying but they stop it there and then maybe justify that all well, everyone criticizes themselves mm. i'm just a human being what do i expect of myself yeah that's like you need to go considerably deeper right mm. like how many times you criticize oh i didn't do that well enough but the answer is not ah, it's okay the answer is ah, i've got to do it better yeah. like how do i do it better what are the ways to get better at things yeah. so it's funny how like maybe the answer for both demographics is the same thing yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah and to add on your point like i used to criticize myself a lot but i used to get into patterns of just not uh doing anything about it yeah. like i used to literally just criticize myself and then just sit there and just yeah. just sit in that you know sadness <laughs> was there a reason why you, you couldn't do anything about it um i think it was mostly like i don't know i just didn't i just didn't know what to do i just had so much things that i I would criticize myself about Mm. i wouldn't really sit there to think about how can i fix it i I felt the same yeah uh, and i've done that previously as well but i I feel sometimes like the the justification of like oh i'm i'm just a human being it like solves that angst so then the problem's gone yeah mm. and as uh, if feel if people feel that like the problem is gone then they won't do anything about it until mm. you know, the next time it happens again yeah so it's and, like, I, and i also wouldn't like I, I also wouldn't um like think about what the the problem i was having i'll just act, act out of emotion mm. was this like before you met dylan and, yeah. yeah okay cool yeah so I, would, yeah. I remember like i would just act out of emotion mm. i wouldn't really like think about how to fix the problem that, at hand I'll just act out of emotion and do something impulsive. Mm. So it's like you were missing like a framework of thinking. Yeah. 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 Which like makes it worse then as well. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. It like compounds the problem even yeah. further. You know, right? talking exactly. about that, like that's like a huge flaw that I had was being impulsive. Yeah. Mm. That's like a, one of my biggest fucking flaws because um, I'm a very emotional guy and like I used to make decisions based on emotions like mm. what G was saying. It's not a good idea, mm. and especially when it comes to investing. Oh, good luck! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so much emotion involved in investing. Yeah, um, I can't remember the stat, but what is it? Like your IQ drops by a certain, but like a ridiculous percentage when you're using emotion to think. Oh yeah. yeah. Whether you're angry, whether you're sad, whether you're happy. Yeah. Like in the markets, we know that there's real world effects. Like you lose actual money. Yeah. Mm. Um, but in your life as well, the metric doesn't have to be money. It can be yeah. relationships. Mm. It can be a whole host of things mm. so it's just important to remember sometimes not the just mm. the metric is not just yeah. money sometimes it's, yeah that's it's a really a good lot. point like i feel like not many people know that one doc mm. like you got to be like a steady rock yeah stay as stable as possible to have the best judgment yeah it's what you just said like it's the sadness mm. your iq drops your happiness your iq drops too mm. you can't mm. think rationally if yeah. you're super happy yeah so it's almost like you have to look at those emotions in a third person view mm. so that you're not wrapped up in that and your IQ is just going up and down. Mm. Yeah. I think it's a predicated upon like a principle from stoicism. It's like try and be as level as possible as much mm. as yeah. possible so that you can really you know, just think clearly. Because mm. mm. yeah. like even being, there's times you can be crazy happy. And it's like that needs to be maybe a response. It's like, oh, and now I'm happy. That's a really good thing. Mm. But not make decisions based upon that yeah 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 because that's important get yeah. you into really bad bad positions and mm. try and make the majority of your life as constant as possible so that you're like we talk about a principle of like we're probably some of the happiest people in the world because our level of like you know what, what would the word be like stagnant operation like our, Cons- like, we're yeah. consistent and so yeah. content uh, yeah our consistency level is higher than a yeah. lot of people so we're like in a better emotional range that's just mm-hmm. higher yeah. of all time so it's yeah. like it's and that's not, always increasing yeah yeah it's like mm-hmm. the job thing we're talking about try and make everything a little bit happier all the time yeah like how much as a percentage can you create that's happy 
or yeah, if that's what you're optimizing for in your life. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I think when you when you're saying doc, like, so you're looking at yourself for the first time, like with no bias, and you realize you have this feeling of you know angst. Mm. You're probably feeling overwhelmed because you're actually starting to the the more you, deeper you go in to your own mind, the more flaws that you realize you have in yourself, mm-hmm. and then you start to realize, oh shit. This Daniel Trace guy is not the same Daniel Trace guy I thought I was, or this, you know, could be any of us. It happened. It did happen to all of us, mm-hmm. and you just realize like it really hurts the ego that much. It's so painful. Mm-hmm. It is so painful. <laughs> you realize you're you're like nothing in a way. Mm-hmm. You're a beautiful soul. You're a beautiful human, but you've got a long way to go in terms of your <laughs> mental ability. Like you really, you know. Mm-hmm. But then the beautiful thing is, I reckon, like. What we do is we look at ourselves, we write everything down, what we need to improve on, and there's going to be a big list. She's long, boys. <laughs> <laughs> right. Then next to the list, just draw a massive arrow. I'm level one. Yeah. But then yeah. now you've got all of these things, and you're starting off as a you know, fresh, slate, fresh slate, and now you can only go up. And then you just start working on these things, order them in the order of importance, like we're talking about with like the how to learn things and all that. What's the 80-20 principle analysis? What's the 20% of this that will give me 80% of the biggest results for the future? Mm-hmm. There's going to be a lot of those things that are not even necessary now. Mm-hmm. You've got to find them and put them in the right order. Otherwise, you're going to waste your time. Mm-hmm. How long do you take to write the list? Oh, man. It's, it, it's like for probably a month to get the most of it done. Yeah. But then it's going to take even way longer years. You're going to say months still going. <laughs> Been doing this shit for six years, man. Grows every day. <laughs> yeah. So you tick something off. The, the funny thing about just increasing yourself or moving up those levels, like the RPG character we're talking about, is you need to move up a level to see another problem. Yeah. Mm. So the minute you, <laughs> it's, it's a cruel way of life, but the minute you progress to a certain point, it only becomes with more flaws and more mm. mistakes and more um, lack of understanding. And lack of understanding because you realize or truly realize how big the actual picture is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's like, that's why I think it's really important for people to realize that it's not a one and done fix. You know, write them down, fix all the things you're good. This is a journey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's actually like all, like our lives are dedicated to always studying more and learning more and mm-hmm. understanding more. And that's what we'll do for the rest of our lives. Mm-hmm. We'll fix as many flaws as possible and we'll create more flaws because of learning other things mm-hmm. that we didn't know. And those flaws are on the f- face value, simple, but when you get down into the deeps and depths of them, they're actually complicated. Mm-hmm. So every, each flaw that you think you have at the moment, even if you write it down, has probably three or four other things that are causing it that are also flaws. And this is a web of things that are not easy to understand. It's complex. Yeah. It's a very, very complex. And because it's so hard, like, like I think most people think criti- self-criticism is a bad thing, but it's actually a good thing. It's, it's constructive so feedback needed. with yourself. Yeah. It's such a good thing. Mm-hmm. Like, the fact that you can criticize yourself and improve yourself, like, you should be willing to take that on. Mm. Like, that's something you want to take on. Yeah absolutely like before even even me before like i used to just think oh i'm criticizing myself i'm overthinking i'm a bad person but <laughs> you know now i'm like oh fuck i'm criticizing myself I have something i need to fix mm. i need yeah. to improve myself on this and so this, you, yeah is- you can't be like down on yourself about it it's a good mm. thing yeah and this is a common trait amongst all of the smartest people in the whole entire world. Yeah. The most successful people. Like Joe Rogan talks about it all the time. Yeah. If he has like one word off in like his comedy special, he can't sleep for a month. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and he, he he does it in a joking way that he can't sleep for a month. He's not like literally he can't like he's just thinking about it. He's just like, Oh damn man, why couldn't I have just done that a little bit better? It's out of love. Mm-hmm. You know, and then next time then it's a great opportunity. Today's a new day. Mm. we're gonna we're gonna go even better tomorrow yeah and just see each other improve you know and it's it's really hard to see your improvement day to day Mm. but check yourself like year to year see how far you're actually coming yeah and what we're talking about is so special because when you start to realize this thing to criticize yourself and improve upon your flaws you really start to like after two years of this constant progression you look back at your old self and like man i'm a different person yeah. And then true happiness comes from progression. Yeah. It comes from progressing as a human. 
Yeah, it's like it's like that voice in your head criticizing like don't turn off that voice in, the, in your head like i feel like a lot of people are turning to like you know alcohol or mm. gambling like picking up addiction so they can turn off that voice in that's their right. head that's Netflix. right yeah it's like you don't want to turn off that voice in your head you want to listen to it yeah absolutely yeah. The, the problems don't go away if you distract yourself from them mm. they just you just become distracted there's still a problem like if you're feeling something like emotionally or let's use the word anxiety because we all understand what that means. Like if something's making you anxious, then is problem most likely a problem there. Mm-hmm. Mm. You know, and it's not the reality situation is not to distract yourself from it, it's to find out what the problem is. Mm. And when you're self aware, you can actually give yourself the solution. Mm. Like the problem is the solution. Yeah. In a lot a lot of cases where yeah. you find the problem, you fix the problem. Yeah. There's the solution. So, like, for the people who are going through a lot of things or just struggling, like, don't not overthink. People think overthinking is a bad thing. Mm. Disagree with it entirely. Overthinking is, and thinking more is the most important thing. That's the answer. It will literally, it literally is the answer. Exactly. This is a really touchy subject because what I really hate about um, society today is they're saying, oh, you've got anxiety, that's normal now. Yes. You know, sometimes, sometimes it is like you got an issue in your mind, but we have helped many, many people get out of that state of anxiety by looking in, you know, we're not psychologists or anything, mm. but we just started to sit them down. What's some of the flaws that you have? And we just start hammering it out mm. and we stay there as a strong support group, you know, cause we're true friends. This is what true friends do. They look at each other. And they f- say, hey, man, you might want to improve on this. You know, I've noticed this. You know, this is what you need to do. This is what a true friend does. Mm. A weak friend would just like, oh, who cares? That's just how Chrissy G is. He, you know, he always does that. That's just him. Let him be. Mm. That's not a true friend. That's so easy to do. Or well, they talk shit about, about you like behind <laughs> your back or something. <laughs> yeah. The true friend tells you your breath smells. Yeah. <laughs> the funny thing so, about like anxiety and stuff is sometimes like me like i'm re- relatively always up and about always have previous to really starting this journey and for majority or at least half of this journey just there wouldn't be a problem in the world you know what i mean but now i realize that that's actually just me not going deep enough and not understanding enough so i remember a point it happened in covid as well just because there's so much more time to think and stuff like that it's like I was like vulnerable because there was more time to think and all these problems came up because I understood more about life and mm. how the world works and all of that. So it allowed me to really break things down to the bare bones for the first time I had like panic attacks and stuff like that and anxiety really badly. And then I was lucky enough to actually have the foundation uh, in this knowledge to understand that the reason is not to hide away from it or to work more. The answer is to think about it more and mm. solve yeah. that problem. Like, what, what is it? Like, what? why are you anxious? Why is your body giving you this response? Because that's what it is. It's the body telling you, hey, well, you're mine. What the hell is going on, man? Like, if your problem at the moment, you're anxious, you don't have enough money, you don't have to, to pay bills. The solution's in the problem. Mm. The problem is you don't have enough money. Okay. There's knowledge out there. Mm. Let's find out how to get more money. Mm. Let's get a job. Let's work our ass off. You know, it, things... Although the topic is complex, the answer doesn't have to be. Mm. Sometimes it literally is that, just putting yourself in a better position and working towards putting yourself in a better position. Yeah. How long, like through that process of you working through your thoughts, how long was that process, like during COVID? I think it, I think it happens always. Like it's consistent. As in like it's not but like, like it would have gotten heightened during COVID, right? Yeah, yeah, everything gets heightened when it's out of the blue. You're like, oh, this has never happened before. It's like, the first kind of stimuli like oh what the hell now and i want to clarify for everyone like there's a lot of people out there who struggle considerably worse like way way worse mine was in the scope of everything not big at all Mm -hmm. but to me it was decent size right um but it i think you struggle with things all the time and it's the struggle of finding the solution for it that's actually kind of the good thing about the journey Mm -hmm. fixing those problems Fixing all of them, you know, like anxiety can just be a flaw. You know, I don't know, being immature is a flaw. It's the exact same thing. The solution is the same. Just think about it more. 
So it happens all the time. It's just another little category added on. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's like a... Yeah. So instead of like diagnosing it as a condition, it's just a flaw. Yeah, well, the reality for a lot, I think a lot of people is they diagnose it as like a condition or it's like now their identity. Yeah. Mm. Like yeah, it's, it's the thing. Yeah. It's like, oh, I now have anxiety. Oh, I now have depression. Oh, I now have this and that. And these things are real, but it doesn't have to be mm. constant. And like, mm. it doesn't have to be the thing that you live by. You don't have to always tear yourself down or like let it debilitate you. Mm-hmm. Like there's real ways to be able to fix it. It's not from distracting yourself and hiding yourself because, you know, when I, sometimes when I have some really bad moments, you know, scroll through TikTok. It's a really easy way to distract yourself. But it doesn't solve the problem mm-hmm. because the minute you get off TikTok, mm-hmm. the pain is still there. Mm-hmm. You, ha- you have to work on it because if you don't work on it, then you're the same person. If you're the same person, you're not getting better. If you're not getting better, you're never going to be happier. And you're never going to be able to help other people. And if you can't help other people, you're never going to be fulfilled in life. Mm-hmm. I think uh, what what you're saying as well, like with the anxiety stuff, it's going back to that Henry Ford quote that we spoke about many times before yeah. on the podcast. Yeah. Whether you think you can or you think you cannot, you're gonna be correct. Mm-hmm. So if you just say, "Oh, I'm, I'm just born an anxious person," you're gonna be an anxious person for the rest of your life. Exactly. What happened to back in school? They used to talk us about building your confidence and stuff like this. Mm-hmm. No one's talking about hey, build your confidence. Yeah. How do you build your confidence? It's actually through knowledge. Yeah. The more knowledge you acquire, the more confident you become. Mm-hmm. Now it's like, what do you own? What's your status? That That is your yeah. level of confidence now. But in reality, that's <laughs> insecurity. It's insecurity, 100%. <laughs> I have a, you know, the, um, like we have like a daily routine kind of thing or like what we need to do for the day and then certain to-do list and thing that we learned a long time ago that I'm sure we'll get into one day. But on the top of that, I have like this little mantra or quote. It's like, you know, actually participating in the journey or, doing the journey is where all the problems get fixed. Mm. So it's like not doing the work solves to like leads to more problems or leads to like lack of brain brain clarity and mm. you know a lot of like stress and all that kind of stuff. But one when you're actually doing the work then everything is okay. <laughs> because it's like constant progress. You're working the thing out. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> you're when actually working, doing it. When I'm not working, I just feel like I've not achieved anything that day you know Mm. that's why like i always feel like yeah you're right the journey is success Mm. like that's that's how you get it that's how that's how you fix um like what you're feeling yeah and doesn't have to be like work is work for us like our job is thinking and learning yeah Mm. literally that's what we do right we're very lucky to say that but working doesn't mean in the sense of going out and doing a job or because that can also be a distraction you know, overworking for sometimes a lot is a distraction. The best thing you could do and should do is actually stop mm. and just think. That's work. Because mm. if you ever had, <laughs> if you ever had to think a lot, that will fatigue your brain. It's work. Mm. It's work. Yeah, you have mm. to put in the work. So, sorry if I went on a tangent. Then yeah, talking about that, really like it, it really touches on what Naval Ravikant talks about in terms of working smart instead of working hard. Because I know some people, they got six figures worth of money, but they're just stuck in the grind mm. where the best thing for them would literally, like you're saying, Doc, is quit your job maybe even or take a break for two months. Mm. In their head, it's like, oh, shit, but I'm losing money. I'm getting further away from my goal. But then that gives you the time to think of a way better decision. Mm-hmm. And that comes back to our analogy. Like, do you actually want to be running against the escalator like at the airport going against it and be stuck in that one position and just tight making tiny little uh increments and you know really putting in a lot of work but you're barely getting anywhere or do you want to run in the same direction as the escalator Mm. so you're just taking these two three meter steps Mm. so sometimes the best thing it literally is yeah to pause and think and and we say it's our job to be thinkers which it is but it's also everyone in the whole world's Mm. job to be a thinker because humans have brains and that's what we do is to think absolutely 100%. yeah i think a, a really good um tangible way of criticizing yourself is like if you go back to the the morning routine um podcast like if you're following that morning routine that we um talked about and if you're not doing it then it's a good way to like criticize like how you can do it better um and that's that's kind of how like I, i've done that and i'm sure everyone here has done that as well but there's a really good thing that you told me 
um, Dylan when we were in, in the Keysborough house. And um, at that time, like I just moved into the Keysborough house and like I didn't have, I didn't do deets at my, my own place. So like this was all like new to me. Um, and you said, don't beat yourself up. Go outside, look at the sun and talk to yourself. Say, I love you. Mm-hmm. Tomorrow, I want to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like that stuck with me because now i'm like i'm not i'm not hating myself for not doing it mm. i love myself so i am gonna do it yeah 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 there's this idea that you can essentially just decide the next day that you're going to do something and it's true mm. you can just decide the next day now i'm working towards this now will you be consistent now like, is that like a part of you no because you have to build mm. habits and build consistency but you can literally just decide i fucked up today i'm doing it properly tomorrow mm. Mm. That's it. And now I'm going to do it properly. And then you start start talking about accountability and stream ownership and all the things we've spoken about in the previous podcast. And mm. it's a really important point. Mm. Yeah. yeah. That's a good one as well. Like just saying like, you just do it. Yeah. Um, like it comes to when we're talking about like raising your bar, mm. you know, setting your standards. Um, you know, like the other day we just had no power in the house. So we're just like, boys, we're going on a marrow. We're going to do a marathon. Right? We all thought it was a joke, but deep down we knew it was legit, right? Because this all was happening. I thought it was legit the whole time. <laughs> no, first it was a, I heard a 10K and then you guys were like, let's just do a half marathon. So here's the deal, right? Well, you must understand about us is like, if we say 11K and we've been doing this for a long time, I know in my head that's a half mother easy. <laughs> You'll always double it. You'll always double, double it. it. 100% double it every time. And just by just being led on wild fucking goose chases half the time <laughs> i'm just now used to it <laughs> so but it's like 11k i'll do a half mazza and then start talking about mazza just as a joke like, <laughs> she's just joking we're gonna do a mazza or actually started real early because we do 1k and we go here we go boys 41 to go and you're like oh shit i hope people are joking <laughs> and then you get to like a half mazza and someone gets their phone out and puts on instagram we're doing a marathon today. <laughs> now we're going to do it, boys. And I've never seen more faces just go, Fuck. <laughs> we're going to be accountable, Sans. Oh, shit. Mate, at that moment, to me, you were like Olivia that sits in front of the class. I just want to right hook you. <laughs> <laughs> I said, we're doing Mazzles. Yeah. But I'm like, all right, boys, we're going to do it. Let's go for the Mazzle, boys. We're going to have a crack. So we would say things like, oh, let's just do a, a quick 4K. Turns do a 42k. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's important to like scare the shit out of yourself sometimes. Yeah. That's terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. I've never, I've not felt pain like a marathon in a while. Ever actually, I don't think. Hmm. Like I was not dude. able to move. This dude with after was wrapped up in a blanket because he was having the hot sweats. He was so cold. I was literally dying. It was after. raining. Huh? It was raining. Like really cold as well. Hmm. And like, dude, oh yeah, I, I, the maximum I've ran before that was 10 Ks. Yeah. I suck at running. So I'm like trying to improve. All right, um, so I ran like 10 Ks, which was my max. And then like here I was running, I, I stopped at 30 Ks. Like I literally couldn't move. Um, mm-hmm. And I noticed like my weakness was actually my calves. Oh yeah. My calves were my weakness. If I like had more strength in my calves, I could have pushed to the 42 Ks. So I stopped at 30. My, I was, my nips were bleeding. It was, fu- it was Dude, fucked up. It was mine were actually horrible. bleeding as well. It was horrible, man. How are your nips bleeding? Uh, Nipple chafing, son. Really? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> my, my you nips, see my tits? <laughs> They're I had, huge. For the next week, I had scabs on my nips. Yeah. It was, oh, it so much, man. The and then the cha- I had the, like the chafing around know. the old butthole and the, uh, <laughs> and the groin. <laughs> Dude, I know this is a family podcast, but seriously, <laughs> like it was, yeah, it was not good. It was not good. How do you get chafing, man? <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh-huh. Moving on from that. I, I was actually, um, <laughs> I, don't think I, was, I think we should just really <laughs> bake on. it. That, <laughs> that was really vulnerable. <laughs> Dude, she's a reality of the situation, son. Tell me no one here got chafing. No, Everyone got chafing, son. I've never chafing. got chafing. I never got chafed, man. <laughs> well, you're lucky, son. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I was actually, um, yeah, actually, on that point of scaring yourself, I was actually, I, I, I was really comfortable. I had this com- comfort knowing that we were going to stop at twenty because my highest that we ever done was like, I think mine was eight or ten, like around yeah, that yeah. eight ten eight or ten kilometers. 
there was like this comfort in my mind that oh we're gonna stop at 20 so once mm. i got to 20 i was like fuck i'm on top of the world i've fucking do- i've fucking dominated my past mm. personal best run yeah and then um as soon as you guys said 42ks <laughs> dude i had like this fear inside of me like mm. this uncertainty mm. like this anxiety just took over me mm. But like David Goggin says, that's fucking, that's like, that's life, man. Mm. Like you never know when, when the shit's going to hit. Yeah. When the bad shit's going to hit, you never know. Yeah. The, the, oh, yeah. I was going to say like, yeah, that was all on purpose because of David Goggins. Yeah. Because you, you need to feel that. Like we always say like the mind is so powerful. You don't understand how powerful the human mind is. Like you just need to learn how to how to use it and how to tap into it. Like David Goggins and these guys, like Jocko Willink and even our mate Johnny Boy, they can tap into this other thing, yeah. and then you can just become a superhero. Yeah. So like that was the thing. Like you did ten k's as your max. Yeah. It's, it's it's okay. Like in most people's eyes, they'll say, "Oh, that's really good." It's okay. It's not that good, but not bad. Today we're doing double that. So you hit the twenty. Congrats, you beat your world record that you thought was so fucking good of 10Ks. You beat it by 100%. That proved to you it wasn't even that good, mm. right? Because if it was that good, you should have only beat it by 100 meters. You should have been tapped out and collapsed at 10.1K, mm. right? So you proved it to yourself. Then what we had to do was we had to triple it at least or quadruple the 10K. But we had to wreck and mess with each other's psychology. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's the thing. Now you've felt that. You've felt that. So next time, you know, and you, you ran 10 kilometers with that feeling. You, you finished at 30K. It's pretty good. But I'll just say it at this stage, it's really great. So congrats to us all for doing it. It's really great. But we can do better still. Yeah. You know, yeah. we can do better. We can do 100K, boys. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, we watch a lot of. I watch a lot of triathlete stuff, and you go. We watch a lot of uh, a good friend, Bo Miles. Mm. Shout, out ran, Bo Miles. shout out to Bo Miles. <laughs> he just ran a six hundred, well, not just, but he has run a six hundred and fifty kilometer run through the Australian Alps. Mm. This he's a outdoor ed teacher. Mm. He's not a like just genetic freak or something like that. Mm. Might, might have some genetics that are pretty good, but the fact is that he has put himself in situations continuously and consistently to just be better. Mm. And like this, when you're running 650 kilometers, there's no end in sight. Mm. There's no end. You're not thinking Mm. about the 650 kilometer. You're thinking about the kilometer ahead of you Mm. every single time. Literally one step ahead of you. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, if you, I'm going to running psychology, but you break down each goal and it's probably a good thing for life as well. You break down the thing where you can see right in front of you, right in front of your eyes. You break down that, that's a goal. One step, got it. Next step, got it. Next step, got it. And then you realize that your brain can actually just do a hell of a lot more than you think because mm. it's actually a dopamine hit every time you, you finish a goal. It's like mm. ticking off the morning routine. So each step is a goal. You did it, you did it, you did it, you did it, you did it. So you're consistently feeding that brain of like, well, I can do it, I can do it, I can do it. And I can happily say that in that marathon, there's not one time I thought I was not going to make it. Hmm. I can really say that out loud. Hmm. Proud myself of that, but it's not enough. <laughs> it's nowhere near. There's hmm. people running 100 kilometers. Bo Miles running 650. Dude, we are bitches. <laughs> <laughs> we are not even close. And why that's important to criticize that is because if you set limitations, a marathon's the same thing as 10K. You set that limitation for yourself, then you're only ever going to do that. I think it's really important to believe like, you can do whatever the hell. <laughs> like, mm. You can just go really crazy with it. There is no limitation. So it's like, how much is the body actually, <clears throat> like unless you're in hospital dying, you've got more left. Mm. And you can argue, oh, you don't need to take your body to that. But, I promise you, when you have the mental benefits of that. You don't need to, but you want to. Mm. Yeah, there's, there's a difference. Courtney DeWalter, you know, she's an ultra. She's she's actually the best runner in the world. Ultra mm. marathon. Men and women, she's the best. This woman is insane. She's so fit. Mm. Um, and it's not genetic or anything like that. She just believes she can do anything and everything all the time. Mm. 
She just pushes herself all the time and she believes she can because she doesn't have limitations. So when she criticizes herself to come be- become better, it's about just doing more all the time. Like, what am I capable of? Like, have, has anyone actually asked themselves, what are you capable of as a human? Not enough. I think we need to do that more. Like, I don't know. I went on a rant. I apologize, but mm. far out. I think it's important. That's a good point. Oh, yeah. This is good Good uh, exercise to actually do. Like, if your run was the 10K, that was your max, go out and double it. Like, you can easily double it in one day mm-hmm. without any training. Just sit in the pain a little longer. You know? I think that's the thing, though. Like, if you... If you want to see your capabilities, uh, where does self-awareness come into the picture? So like, so let's just say I can, I can, I can believe that I can do a a hundred kilometer run, Mm. but where does the self-awareness come in? Does the self-awareness then be like, Mm, oh, I I can probably actually only do, actually only do 20. I would say, look at all of the people in the world. Has there been anyone else in the history of mankind that has ran a hundred K? If so, how many? Oh, hundreds of thousands. Of those hundreds of thousands, who look like you? Uh, tens of thousands. If tens of thousands of boys can do it, why can't you do it? Mm-hmm. The other example is talking about the NBA. All right, how many people are in the NBA right now? I don't know, less than a thousand. How, how many of them look like a bald-headed chubby checker, <laughs> right, with legs that are... I'm, <laughs> You don't know, like when you meet me in real life, everybody gets shocked because of how short I am and how wide. Yeah, because you put the angle camera <laughs> and you're on FaceTime and this shit like fucking this. <laughs> Try but, <to> check up. <laughs> most people have more more legs than upper body, right? It's normally in between. About, they're around 60% legs, 40% upper body. I'm the other way around. You're going harsh on yourself here, I'm bro. 60% upper body, 40% legs. That's why I can just touch my toes like that. Dude, that's right. wild. <laughs> so easily. Everyone thinks they got great flex- flexibility. It's actually just math. Right? Look, see, Doc can't touch shit. I can't even straighten my legs. Doc can't touch shit. Right, I've got to try this. That's because he's never done yoga. Right. <laughs> so you know it's too bad. Yeah, but I now... He's in reach. You're fucking... Dude, you're, you're yeah. wings, <laughs> he's got wings, man. I've got wings, bro. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, but the fun. thing is... Now, it's highly unlikely, it's possible, that I get in the NBA. But would you place a bet? How much percentage of your net worth would you invest in me getting into the NBA? Well, <laughs> not with the shot that I've seen you do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. If you were actually good. <laughs> no, it looks like an NFL throw on a fucking floor. No, you you imagine that- but based on what you're talking about, the characteristics, the answer is $0. Yeah. There's no, no chance imagine, you're taking Imagine I had a son. He looked exactly the same as me, and he's 10. And we're going to say, we're going to do whatever it takes to get you in the NBA. Not a chance. Right? It's, but and then you said you, G had a son. He was 10. Mm-hmm. How much percentage of your net worth would you say he can run 100Ks by 18? And he wins a million dollars if he fucking does it. Mm-hmm. High percentage. I'm, I'm, saying, I'm large. Your son yeah. getting into NBA. 100, 100 kilometers is not that much. Like, so my son, right, there's two bets. One is about, so we're talking about two games. My first game is, I have a son that has the exact same genetics as me. He's 10 years of age. And we have, like, you know, access to all the resources in the world to invest in this guy to get into the NBA and play on the game day every day. Every day hmm. Right? And if he gets on the NBA, obviously, he's going to be very, very wealthy. So, he gets, he gets that reward. We will just guarantee him an extra million dollars as well. Right? And whoever places the bet on that, you make 100 times your money. So if it, and then how much percentage of your net worth, it could be zero. Mm. Would you place on that bet? You know. So for me, I'm I would literally put zero because I don't think it's possible. It's highly, highly unlikely. One percent max. I'll put my money on that. But then the other game is G has a son has the exact same genetics as him. Mm. He's ten years of age, and all he needs to do is by age eighteen, which is the same as my son run 100Ks, right? He gets guaranteed a million dollars and we will make 100 times our investment in 10 years, like eight years, mm. um, you know? I'm betting like my whole net worth on this thing. Guaranteed, yeah. You got the resources. It's it's, it's so possible. Yeah. You just got to understand the game. That's that's all yeah. it is. But Yeah, I get what you're saying. So like, 
There's different types of games. Yeah. That's a good way of putting it. The 100K is not that hard. NBA is very difficult. Very difficult. There, There is a Biggest Loser contestant a few years back, but people don't know. Kono is like a world championship for triathletes. And this is a 3.8 kilometer swim, 180 kilometer bike, and a marathon after that. And a world, a Biggest Loser contestant finished it in 17 hours and three minutes. 17 hours of the cutoff, so technically... But the point is, like, 17 hours he was able to finish that. Mm. That's impressive. What, none of us can do that? Mm. Like, physically speaking, we're in better shape. Mm. But we can def- we can argue right now that mentally he's in better shape than we are. Because he's gone and done that thing. Mm. We don't get, we don't just become mentally strong. We, be, we get, we give ourselves opportunities to become mentally strong. Mm. The marathon was an opportunity. Mm to expand that willpower battery and your mental capacity. It was an opportunity to do that. Mm. And every day there's an opportunity to build up your mental capacity. Mm. So it's like put yourself in those situations you on purpose. To. Mm. You have yeah. to because one day the world's going to come crashing down or something is going to happen in your mm. personal life where you need to have that mental capacity. Mm. You need it to save your family. That's the reality situation that Dylan's example of everyone gets cancer in your family. You have to be able to be strong and secure mentally to be able to fix and help yourself, your family get out of that situation. Mm -hmm. Fix the situation. Try to fix the situation. Be strong for your family. Mm. And if that's the first opportunity, you will break. Mm. I can 100% tell you that you will break if you have not done the work previous to it mm. you have to put the work in yeah. this is one of one of those things where it doesn't happen overnight you've got to work on this like every single day for, mm-hmm. for many years and that's why it's part of the journey mm. like it's, it's not a pill and you know that's that's the kind of society we live in now like we, we want the immediate fix and there's not one of those things no. but the rewards are <laughs> the rewards are really high if you can fix your flaws and find your flaws and mm. you're going to be a, an incredible human being. So yeah, like just relating this writing stuff back to the podcast, there was a flaw in our level of thinking. We thought 10 kilometer run was the max we could do. And we could barely, you know, if we said, Hey, how much do you reckon you can really run? You'd start because you anchor yourself into that 10 kilometer. You're like, Oh, maybe 11 kilometers, maybe 12, maybe 13. If I really push it, but we did, 20k and you felt good at 20k mm-hmm. then when we said no boys we're going another we're going to keep going but we had already said no we're stopping at 21k the half marathon mm-hmm. but then you ran another 10k to 30k you know you just proved and you did it in that pain of that bad psychology you proved it to yourself like how capable you are as mm-hmm. a human being I bet you, you actually, uh, we, we all evolved into a different version of ourselves. We really leveled up big on that day. You know, we saw it. The previous us thought we could only do 10K. You know, we did end up 30 and potentially 42. Okay. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. So this awakens us. We can do more, man. So the average person at home, they might have only done 5K. You know, do try 10. Try 10. It's all good in order to say I... I can do anything. I believe I can do anything. So, you know, but to embody it and then act on it when it's actually you're in the moment, mm. that's just hard, man. You know, when I was when I was doing that, um, I, and if you haven't done it, you're going to actually experience like a lot of different thoughts that you never would normally have. Um, and I and I didn't think something as basic as this would affect me so much yeah. so this was like when i was running and this was probably like after 25 k's i actually internally i was crying and i was really emotional because i couldn't move my legs i was like why can't i fucking move and i was like on the verge of tears because i'm like this is so easy for me to do why am i not able to do this and i never thought that would affect me but like when you put yourself in those type of situations you start to think like your thoughts just are different so I think if you haven't done it, I think you should go, you guys should try it. Like mm-hmm. if you haven't done it, yeah. try putting putting yourself in those type of situations and see how you actually think. Mm-hmm. I, pro- I promise you right now, not like that thought of not being able to move your legs is the reason you couldn't move your legs. Mm. 
but like I, I knew I could move my legs. If you yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. If you're telling yourself more jeebles, there's yeah. no problem here. Because dude, my pain, like we were talking about pain tolerance and levels on the day, mine was a eight for a long time. Yeah. Like this toe right here is broken. <laughs> like mm-hmm. that's not in a good way. And you boys know I got injuries and shit. Oh, I'm yeah. so sorry. You got injuries, but it's like it is separating your mind from everything. All of that. Mm. All the time. Separate it entirely. Yeah. It doesn't count. Nothing counts. Yeah. It doesn't matter. The pain doesn't matter. The pain's a good thing. It means you're putting yourself in that situation. Mm. And what, what you can do as well in terms of your psychology, because it's all about psychology. It's understanding your own psychology is, you know, like we were talking about it the other day between us all. Instead of saying like, I should do another kilometer, I should mm. do 42 kilometers. You say, I'm lucky enough to have the shot or the ability to run 42, the chance, you know, I'm able to do this, you know, like, because we're so fortunate, like, we didn't, we don't have to work, you know, we, we, we have legs, <laughs> you know, I'm just thinking about people that don't have legs, they don't have the ability, like, imagine the frustration that would, they would love to run a marathon, they can't. What about Wickon? Yeah. Wickon has to get someone else, to have the same thought as him, so that they can, he can have someone running a marathon with him, because he can't yeah. see. He doesn't mm. have a choice. It's not easy for him to walk out the door and go and do it. Mm. Right now, all of us can go and do a marathon. Yeah, I think we can do it now easily. Mm. Um, because like you know how, G, you were, you were thinking, hey, I have 22 kilometers in my head and you hit the 20, 22 kilometers and you became so happy. But that showed that you had more energy, right? So now if we say, hey, let's do 42 Ks, right? Mm. So now you're looking at 42 Ks as the end. Mm. But we're actually capable of at least sixty. Yeah, I think. What I mean, to really hone on that point again of like it was on purpose. What do we do that night as well? Biking. That night we wanted another bike. Yeah. <laughs> no <laughs> one was tired enough. Yeah, and the biking was so easy. Yeah, man. it was easy. That actually, it was a cool fixed, down. Dude, that fixed our shit. Yeah, we got the blood flowing again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It fixed it. So this is what happens when power goes out at the dojo. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you're not tired. <laughs> You're just telling yourself you're in pain. You're telling yourself you've got limitations yeah. on your own brain. Mm. A, a, a crazy thing as well is like, I've had partners in the past and I told, I've said it to you boys before, they've ran more than 10Ks on their first shot with me. Females with no training, no training whatsoever, never been to the gym, never ran. First shot with me in the middle of winter when it's pouring down raining. It's very easy, man. Mm. It's very easy. Like, I've never come across someone that can't do it. Everyone can do it. People just don't believe they can. For some reason. We are all literally superheroes. Absolutely. We are. That's what I love about Hardcore Head Start. Like, think about what we're doing. Some of this shit, people are going to be turned off by a lot of this message. Mm. You know? Because you can interpret it the wrong way and thinking, like, oh, these guys think they're the best because they can run a marathon. We're saying we don't think we're the best. But what we love is... We're constantly improving. We have really great intentions to donate $1 billion. And that's our mission through our brand, Hardcore Head Start. It's hardcore. We realize to be successful in this day and age, you've got to put in that hardcore work to get that head start in life. Then once you get that head start and you're living life on your terms, then what can you do? You can help everybody around us. And that's what, that's what we've achieved and we're doing it. Mm-hmm. You know, we said this years ago that we're going to do it and we're doing it today. We're staying by our words, our promise that we made. And then once we help all of our friends and family, what will we do? In the next 10 years, we will be you know, overseas helping, making a major impact in the world. And why can we do this? It is because we are hardcore. Because we look at all of our flaws every single day and we build ourselves up, become stronger. Like I saw this beautiful statue that um, this business owner gave to um, one of the guys that were working with him that really helped grow their business. And it was a... It was called a self-made statue. And what it was, it was like this Greek god chiseling himself out of a block of concrete, building himself up. That's who we are. We are like that Greek god. Mm. We need to just make ourselves. Mm. You know, We've got to build it ourselves into that person that we want to be. And it is possible if it's realistic with the games. NBA, oh, might be unlikely. Might be, might be extremely likely. You might be nine foot that has a vertical leap on him 
eight meters. And if you don't play NBA, I'll come for you. <laughs> you should be playing NBA. Yeah. 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 Huh? You can no, probably dunk no, from no, half court. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen, um, what's that Space Jam movie? Yeah, yeah, that yeah. big thing where he just oh, jumps from half court and he dunks? That's him. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, that's Michael Jordan in the end. Yeah. Did you guys see the video that I sent you guys on IG about the, the basketball with just one hand? Oh, yeah. he was good, man. Yeah. He was dunking on everyone. <laughs> Dude, I think that's actually a really good advice for NBA, like people trying to be an NBA player. Yeah. Tie up one arm and practice with one arm yeah. for ages. Dude, he was smooth. Like there was like no resistance at all. Yeah. He trained himself up even though he had a handicap, literally. Yeah. He's dominating. He was playing in like, uh, like with, like it wasn't like a disability league either. It was like a normal, normal yeah. basketball. Mm. He was dunking on boys. But that was my question, I guess. Like, that guy imagine all the people that would have told him and logically thinking like he's got one hand yeah like for that guy to think dude i'm gonna be an nba star i don't think he i don't think he thinks he's gonna be an nba star oh no sorry but like you know yeah. i think it's about fucking this is like what i love doing it's like how can i become the best version of me the best version of him is not going to be an nba young star unfortunately yeah. you- it's just going to be like the best in the local league but then maybe the best version of him actually is to use the disability he has and share his story with people mm. help nba stars help other people maybe coach maybe help disability like it's really there's cool so many things thing. he can do like yeah. yeah he's inspiring his local community maybe that's his goal yeah. like us we're never going to be the best at anything but we're not supposed to be the best at anything we're just supposed to be the best version of ourselves yeah. and that's our message to spread that on everybody that's so true. he's probably doing so much better like good for the world spreading so much positivity how many people are looking at that guy like damn i gotta level up now because i got two mm, arms yeah. <laughs> no excuse and he wasn't even that tall was he like he was, he was average I yeah he was average yeah. perspective yeah. for everyone mm. well, maybe <clears throat> using like the marathon again um as an analogy like we talk about this principle of kind of reflecting on every detail uh, every night mm. even on like the small things but using the marathon like what were you thinking that night after the marathon like what were the things you were saying to yourselves not in like a pain way but like kind of reflecting on what happened and where you could have been better or where you could have done better like what were some of the things so, you guys were saying to yourself what i was saying was i love i love me for running 30 kilometers um i'm in a lot of pain right now and I need to fix my flaw of getting stronger legs because if I had stronger legs, I would have done 42 easy. Mm -hmm. I had no problems breathing. It was literally my legs. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, we'll do it again. Mm. Yeah, that's beautiful, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wish I said that. I was just like, fuck, I should just done 42 kilometers. (laughs) 12 kilometers away. (laughs) I was like, fucking hell, Jake. But you got to give yourself props, man, because that was very tough on the mind psychologically yeah. what we did we said we're going for 10k then we're like no boys we're going for half marrow and we got to the half marrow and like well you should have known as well you should have been smarter because bro we're running in one direction <laughs> <Yeah. man. laughs> <no loop. laughs> dude you know what he's doing as well we changed we changed the thing at the last minute if you boys kept on going and we went and we we're going to go in a different way but when we got home it wouldn't have been a marathon so we would have got home. I'm so glad we did that. <laughs> no, because when we when then we got home, it would have been another 5k. Yeah. So you would have seen the house and then had to keep going. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what we were doing. To do. That's what we're about to do <laughs> until you guys. Um, yeah. So yeah, just well, imagine how to tough like, that would be. <laughs> when we got to like uh, Monash, I'm like, yeah, we're not coming back. <laughs> <laughs> we're going straight ahead boys. but it was good man because you know we all our, all of our emotions were up and down you know we got frustrated yeah. at time angry sad happy you know it was good to experience all yeah. of that yeah yeah definitely that an experience experience actually definitely what were you thinking of that? i was happy with myself <laughs> <laughs> you did it yeah it was a good place good shit good shit no, i was, I was proud of myself yeah what about you though no i was just thinking like fuck Cause I, yeah, I was thinking, fuck, what is it? What is this shit capable of? We can do that shit. Then we did yeah. a bike ride. I'm like, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. So I was like, I just primed myself, went for another 10k the next day, mm-hmm. and then another 15k bike ride after that, the day after. So I was like, how much is this shit capable of? Mm-hmm. Like, what's possible? 
Yeah. The, the crazy thing is just like we're in such a fortunate position because we have us. You know, yeah. we have this community that we're building. Yeah. Um, you know, if we try to do it alone, there's no way we're doing 42Ks, no. you know, or 30Ks. We're probably doing the 10.1 kilometer, yeah. you know. And this is what it's going to be so good. Like once we start building out this community with hardcore heads, uh, we'll have days. Mm-hmm. Hey, boys, we're going on a marrow. Yeah. You know, and that's... Dude, what... imagine that, like 100 boys just running a marrow together. Yeah. Be scared, by the way, because you won't know. You're going to turn up thinking it's lunch. We're going on a fucking marathon. Yeah, we're, going to, <laughs> we're going to have boys just... <laughs> <laughs> One of our best friends, Marky, also a co-founder of Hardcore Heads, that I scared the shit out of him yesterday. Because I've been telling him for weeks, when he comes, we're doing a matter. <laughs> he like didn't bring shoes on purpose. <laughs> oh, Mark, I got shoes. Don't worry, son. <laughs> no excuses, boys. Dude, that'll be good. We should actually buy a brand new pair of like Nikes, every size. Yeah. So you have no excuse. <laughs> you know what I should do to you, boys? I should like drive us somewhere. Like, you know, like we, we all go in my car. We'll just drive somewhere. And then I'll just fucking take the keys, just park it somewhere and be like, boys, let's keep running. <laughs> There's no way we're getting back. <laughs> And have like C4 and blow up your car. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going like back, Joker. boys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like Joker we drive all the like, other side of the state and just drive it into a dam or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to run back. Like, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> and the next day you're like, fuck, I needed the car. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my insurance. Imagine <laughs> you telling that story to insurance. We had to go for the jog. So we decided to park it in a dam. <laughs> Here's your money, sir. <laughs> <laughs> The crazy thing about us is like, we're successful people and all of that, but at the same time, we're so Australian. Yeah. So like, we're so unique. Like, <laughs> this shit doesn't exist. It, it makes place. no sense. We're like, we're like four different Australian national like animals. <laughs> the fucking kangaroo here, the emu, got the platypus and the echidna. <laughs> Dude, as a, as a oh, joke, I was going to say, let's run to Sydney, but I'm scared that you're going to take that serious and then hold us accountable for that. No, we should actually go for the bike Fuck ride. Doc's looking at me. <laughs> at, aren't we bike riding to Queensland? Yeah, we yeah. are. 100%. No, we actually... Dude, First Queensland said, is no, not... Before, you know, Queensland's like 19-hour drive, right? I don't it's just all right. I'm saying this on the podcast. It's right. We're saying this on the podcast, which means we have to do it eventually. We are bike riding to Queensland. You know, that's why I prefaced it by saying it's a joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's I'm not joking, son. Mate, you just made it into an existence. So. You did this to yourself, G. You did this to yourself. Let's go, G. But maybe like going back to the point of like reflecting. On, <laughs> that's what like, we were talking about. Good point of the podcast a little bit. Um, of like <laughs> <laughs> reflecting on the marathon was an example, but I think it's good to reflect on your flaws. Mm, we yeah. want to talk about that a little bit more. Like, yeah, like, like, like I was saying, um, the easiest way to start doing that is to like follow the morning routine because those are like tangible steps that you can do to actually see if you're following something and you can like point out your flaws that way. And that's how I started. Um, and then if I, I would like analyze myself, literally I have like a, a mirror in my room. I would like back, I would just go to like a mirror, but now I look at the mirror in my room. I would just look at myself and then ask what did I do wrong today? Um, what could I have done better today? And then it's all out of love. I don't hate myself. Um, before I used to like spiral out of control when I would hate myself, but like it's all out of love. What can I do better tomorrow? Mm. And just again, like back to the um, atomic habits, just do 1% better every day. And then yeah. next day, that's eventually how you fix your flaws. Mm. Mm-hmm. And like from a like big macro level as well, just, you know, thinking from the absolute, if you're just getting started, and you're looking at all of your flaws, one of them is going to be your character and your mindset. So that's why we're talking about doing something strong for your mind. Because now that we've done this, everything else starts to look easy. You know, once you can prove it to yourself, get a big major win, you know, you thought you couldn't do it and then you did it, then it just gives you this positivity that you can do absolutely anything. And then like, you literally weigh it all out. Look at it, look at everything that you need to do. All right, my mindset's weak. Let's start fixing it. Oh, I don't know how to, I, need, I want to be successful. I want money to work for me. I need to learn about money. I need to learn about investing. I need to learn about tax. I need to learn about the legal system. I need to learn about business. Do I want to go down that route? Do I know about marketing? Do I know about social media? You know, you start weighing out all of these things mm-hmm. and then, all right, 80-20 principle analysis, what's actually important? No matter what, mindset is always at the top there. It's always in that top 20% that will give you 80% of the results. You need that strong mind. So aim high, but um, 
be self-aware of the steps that you need to take yeah. to get there yeah of the small steps as well mm-hmm. and reflect on everything or like be self-aware of every little small detail mm-hmm. like even very very small things are fours because those small things as we say all small details matter mm-hmm. you know if you can't do the deets at your house how are you going to be able to build a business so exactly the thing if you got this little floor it'll compound into a larger problem mm-hmm. you have to fix everything even from like conversations it's like you say like Joe Rogan gets one word wrong in his comedy special. Mm. You know, if we say one thing that's a little bit out of turn or probably didn't wouldn't have registered as well to a client, mm. that's a, that's a, that's a problem. Mm. All right, understood that. Let's fix it. Mm. Yeah. Uh, um, how'd you get your partners to run ten k? I just I, I tell them the exercise. I literally walk I walk them through it. Say, hey, your mind is more you, you're more capable of what you think. Yeah. Did you did I'll you tell them that we're gonna do ten K today or do you just like be like, Well, I'm going for a run? Oh no, I, like depends on the person. Not all of them. Um, but um yeah, like you can say to them, Hey, do you believe you what's the furthest you've ever ran? They're like three K. Do you believe you can run ten kilometers today? They say no. All right, write it down. I cannot run ten kilometers today. Right? And sign your name there. Now you give them the lesson. To prove that their brain is thinking incorrectly. To prove that they have a flaw in their character, in their mindset, in their knowledge. They have a, they have a flaw. And you walk them through it very slowly and explain they can be they are capable of anything and we're gonna prove it to you can prove it to yourself today and go and do it. Yeah, and every single person can do it. Every single, you know, any 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 person that's our age can do it anyone you know i don't know anyone that can't oh <laughs> i think um i think there's one more point on here and it's the uh, the ripple effect mm. do you want to touch on that one dylan yeah by jordan peterson yes yeah, so, yeah jordan peterson he talks about this he's like you don't know how important your actions actually are in the whole entire world. How you live your life is so crucial because it will have a ripple effect onto other people. So if you don't make your bed properly, then that's a detail that you're missing. Then you're going to miss other details in your house. And then if you're living with roommates, they're going to start to absorb that energy, start to absorb those habits. And then, you know, they they you have and now taken value from them and then they will do something you know they train you're training your subconscious mind you will then do something to your like your friends and family and then slowly it spreads across the whole world and next thing you know it you know we start heading in a really bad direction with society then on the positive note when you do something really good you don't realize how good it is because it's not about you it's about the ripple effect how many people can you inspire by taking the action, by walking the walk, mm-hmm. instead of just talking the talk? So, it, it's it's really important that you you do this and like, man, we can feel it. Remember, like before, I was saying, I started the ripple with hardcore. You know, it's not my ripple; it's everybody's ripple. But, you know, I helped you guys leave your jobs. You guys got that much money now invested compounding at a rate that you're making a whole salary by doing nothing which gives us the ability to spread our ripple even harder with this is like a little tsunami we're starting now then what was the most important thing we did last year we had to start the ripple with our family that was a crucial ripple we had to help our family get their finances right and what jordan peterson talks about is you can't just you can't you can never sell someone Just by saying, hey, you should do this, this, and this, and this to your family. You need to walk the walk first. You need to fix your finances properly, then help them, and then they will do it. And you you actually sometimes don't even need to talk to them anymore because they will absorb it. Like I'm noticing my sister's absorbing it. Mm. And they're actually surprising the crap out of me, like how powerful they are as young girls you know, in their early 20s. They're surprising me, man. You know, they all got their own businesses, you know, making six figures plus. And, you know, like, I'm barely there. 
I'm barely there, but I know it's I'm doing my role. I could do more to be there more, to, to help more and mentor more. Um, but if I wasn't that person myself and I just tried to mentor, I'll be a fake guru. Mm-hmm. It wouldn't have any impact. So, you know, my next step is a floor of mine. I need to spend more time with my family and, and mentor even more. Something I'm actually working on right now. Same. Because we went away for, essentially, we went away for like five, six years now. Mm. It's like r- really only seeing Christmas time and maybe now and then, mm. which was difficult. It's, the goal was separate mm. yourself so you can become that hero you're talking about so you can then actually give the value back, right? Mm. Which was all by design. Yeah. And the thing, like, you got to understand this, like, because if you're hearing it from the audience, you got to understand your self awareness of where you actually are. You can't give financial advice unless you really, really know this stuff. And to understand if you know how this investing game works and money game works, you got to think about yourself. Like to get our system, our investing system to where it is today, every single day I asked, what is wrong with the system? What is wrong with the system? What is wrong with the system? And I'll think it's all sorted. Three months later, the market would, you know, kick me up the ass and I'm like, oh shit, there's another floor. And if it wasn't that in three months, within the next three months, it's not the market, it's me finding the floor because I asked, what is wrong with the f- system? What is wrong with the system? You know, so you got to go at least, I would say literally three years before you can really start giving proper investment advice. You can give basic investment advice, like, hey, save your money. You know, invest into something like the S&P 500. But I wouldn't be saying invest it here, here, and here, and here. Because if you haven't lasted three mu- three years being profitable in the markets, you, you're going to find out you've got a flaw in your system. It's highly, highly likely you've got a flaw. So you just got to be really careful with this stuff. When money is involved, money is the most important thing in the world. Why? Because it gives you access to everything. If you lose your mum's $100,000 or something, dude, you're wasting years of your life to get that money. That money could have gotten her food, could have helped her retire earlier you know it's really really important money so really think about everything and you know at this stage it's best to listen to our podcast and just absorb all of the knowledge and we will eventually get to all the money stuff soon Mm -hmm. and the investing Mm -hmm. stuff later but everything has a time so just have that self-awareness to to know when it's ready Mm -hmm. absolutely yeah yeah the points boys i think you hit the nail on the head with them yeah, I've got nothing to add to that. I think we should pack it up then, boys. I think we wrap with that beautiful last message. Yeah. All right, boys. All right, boys. So uh, thank you guys for watching this episode of Hanging with Hardcore. Again, if you guys liked it, please like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss an episode. We put out one every week and there's episode number 14, boys. So um, yeah, let's pack it up. Pack it up. Pack it up. Pack her up. Thank you for listening.